Hey guys, um, I hope everybody have a, had a great Thanksgiving today, and I hope that everybody um, that's doing this Black Friday thing stays safe, and yeah, I stayed home for Thanksgiving dinner today. I had a headache. I slept almost the entire day, and I'm not doing the Black Friday thing because I cannot stand crowds. I cannot stand early morning. Um, yeah, it's just not my thing, but anyways... When people found out I was reading Through Her Eyes by Jennifer Archer, everybody was telling, saying uh, that they hoped that I did a review on it. So I am going to do that. Even though this review, I'll be straight out honest with you, is probably going to be all over the place. Um, I try to think the best way to do this review without giving away too much, and I really don't know how to do that. So that's why it's going to be kind of scattered. So just bear with me. <laughs> um, first, I just have to say, though, I did very, I enjoyed this book a lot. So I'm going to read the inside to you guys. Every ghost has a story to tell. The last place Tansy Piper wants to be is stuck in Cedar Canyon, Texas, in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of small town kids. But when her mother decides to move to the, des to the desolate West Texas town, Tansy has no choice but to go along. Once there, Tansy is immediately drawn to the turret of their rickety old house, a place she soon learns has a disturbing history. But it's the strange artifact she finds in the cellar, a pocket watch, a journal of poetry, and a tiny crystal that have the most chilling impact on her. Tansy soon finds that through the lens of her camera, she can become part of a surreal black and white world where her life is intertwined with that of mysterious troubled Henry, who lived in the same house and died decades earlier. It seems that their lives are linked by fate and the artifacts she found, but as Tansy begins spending more and more time in the past, her present world starts to fade away. Tansy must untangle herself from Henry's dangerous reality, but before before she loses touch with her own life forever. Um, so, it's a ghost story. And about this girl, Tansy, her mother is a writer, so they're always moving around places. Her mom likes to live someplace that... Um, kind of resembles or relates to the story she's writing, the setting of the story she's writing. So this time it's in a small town. So they move back to her grandfather, Satanji's grandfather's hometown, and they move into this house, as the book says, that is actually the house that Henry from, like over 40 years ago, he died. Um, he did not die in the house, um, but there is a lot of rumors surrounding him. There's a lot of stories that have passed over the years surrounding this boy. And... In the cellar, on her first day there, Tansy finds the pocket watch, she finds the journal, and she finds a crystal. And she's, you know, intrigued by it. So she brings it into the house with her, and she starts reading the journal. And it's just a book of poems, but it seems like those, bo those poems are written for her. She reads just one poem each time that she goes into this book. And she's really drawn. She's really, really drawn to these objects. And when she starts school, with it being a small town especially, everybody knows everybody, but she's already an outcast. And she doesn't seem to fit in. So these objects are calling to her even more for that reason. And soon, Tansy finds a way that draws her back into the past. And she ends up being part of the world of Henry and her grandfather when he was younger, and then of this girl, Isabel, who was Henry's girlfriend. And it's very, very interesting reading when she goes back in time. And all of this happens with the help of her camera, as it says. And the world is black and white, but the more she, she travels to this place, and I'm not going to give away how she gets there um, or how this, this occurs, but the more time she spends in this other world, or this past life, uh, more color starts to emerge. And when she gets pulled back into the present time, she starts noticing that things, not everything's in color anymore. So she's afraid that if she spends too much time in this past life, that she's going to get stuck there. So that's one of the things with the book. Um, and another thing is... Tansy is starting to fall for Henry, which is really freaky and just weird in itself. And um, so when she comes back to the present tense, 
she's confused because now she has these feelings from then and then she has the feelings from the present time and she's starting to get these confused. She ends up confessing to a few people um, about what's going on and it's just, it's interesting. I've been into ghosts and stuff like that. I went on ghost tours and um, spent the night in a haunted house um, and it's just, it's just real, so I think maybe that's another reason why this was just really interesting to me. And of course, with all ghost stories, usually the ghost is trying to tell you a story. It's trying to tell you something. Um, and so that's what, of course, what's going on in this book. In the present day, she ends up befriending a girl, uh, Bethlyn Ann and Tate. Tate somehow is acting a little weird. He's got these mood swings and Tansy suspects that there's more to him than he's letting on. So we find that out too in the book. I do wish that the mystery behind him though was a little bit deeper and a little bit more than it actually ended up being. I really enjoyed Bethlyn's character, Bethlyn Ann's character. She quoted Shakespeare all the time and um, she was just a little strange on that end. I really, really liked how she was written. I really liked her character. Tansy also, too, she was very good. I liked the emotions that she had. Um, she wasn't a flat character. Um, I really enjoyed her. I think my most favorite parts in the book were when Tansy went into the past. I think those scenes were my favorite. Henry, the kid that died, um, he was in love with Isabel and just the feelings that are portrayed in those scenes um, they were intense and I liked that I really I really really liked those scenes um, there's some other characters in the book and some of them I don't really understand their significance I don't know if they're just fillers um, but I think the story could have did with or without them. There's also one other character in this book that I'm not sure. Her name's Allison, and I'm not really sure her whole role in the story is either. Now, she's got something that she was involved in. And Bethlyn Ann knew about it, and she kind of kept it a secret from Tansy. He really didn't want to say anything. Um, and then when it came out, it was it was a sad thing, but it wasn't like, no, it was sad. But I still don't know why it was kept a secret and why Allison was kept sort of like a mystery in herself either. So I'm kind of confused on the purpose of her too. But overall, the story, I gave it four stars. Um, I thought it was really good. There was a lot of intrigue in it, mystery, um, the love story going on, and um, yeah. I'm sorry that I can't say more, but like I said, I don't want to give too much away in this book. All I can say is that you should read it. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, also, this cover with these green eyes in that, this cover is beautiful. I love this cover. So, yeah. I hope I was able to kind of help you guys decide if this is a book you wanted to read or not. So the next book I'm going to read is um, Horns by Joe Hill. I'm going to try to dig into that. I'm hoping I can get into it because it's supposed to be a good book. And I actually just found out I went to um, look further into it on the Internet. And there was a, a post from back in May saying that they're gonna make a movie out of it so I thought that was interesting I always like like that I don't know I, I just feel like if they make a movie out of a book then the book must be really worth something now whether that's true or not I don't know but that's how I feel so anyways that's it and I will talk to you guys later